It's okay to take NFT profits. Actually, it's basically a requirement for most NFT projects because eventually the NFT bubble will pop. And I am not bearish on NFTs. I am extremely bullish. I think they will be here in the future and I think the space will only grow and evolve over time. But what we're seeing right now is just not sustainable. Everything across the board is going up. And I'm sure you've heard it before. 99% of NFTs will go to zero. Now, I don't think the number is that high. I think it will be less, but certainly a majority of NFTs will eventually go to zero. Right now, this is a game of musical chairs. And in this video, we are going to discuss methods on how we can actually hold on to one of these shares. Also, we're going to discuss where the money will flow into when the bubble pops. And make sure to comment down below your favorite NFTs, NFTs that you think have potential. And with that being said, let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase, let's get to it. The NFT market is currently on fire. And like everyone is saying, eventually it will pop. Now, this is not unique to NFTs. This is how it works with all collectibles, whether we're speaking about trading cards or art or sneakers. The way it ends up is that you have a majority of those collectibles. They don't really have much value. And then you have a small percentage that has a lot of value. And the same thing will happen with NFTs. And speaking of NFT crashes, we already had one back in April and it's known as a silent crash because when it comes to NFTs, it's a very illiquid market. There aren't many buyers or sellers. So we have these crashes that happen overnight under the radar, which is why they're called silent crashes. I'm talking about crashes of 70, 80, 90% overnight. This is different than crypto. Crypto might have a crash of 10, 20, 30, maybe 40% overnight, but you can always sell. There's always a buyer on the other side. But with NFTs, because it is a liquid, when it crashes, there's not always a buyer. There are even cases where not only are you at a 90% loss or maybe 100% loss, but you can even sell it. And it's funny to look at this article back from April. This is what it says. CryptoPunks, among the earliest and most popular NFT projects for collectors, have seen a over 40% decrease in floor price to 14 Ethereum, $28,000 at the time. Of course, now in October, as we read this, we look at this, it's a joke, it's funny. We think, wow, 40% decrease, 14 Ethereum CryptoPunks. That was a steal. But at that time, the markets were scared. Everything crashed. But CryptoPunks, as we know, is a blue chip NFT. So it had a crash and it came back stronger, much stronger. And this is a key difference between blue chip NFTs and non blue chip NFTs. The non blue chips will have their pumps and then they'll come right back down and they stay down. The blue chips, they'll go up and they'll also have their pullbacks, their crashes but they will come back stronger. So something very important to understand about these blue chip NFTs, right? They don't go straight up. They still have their pullbacks as well. And right now in the crypto space, we are seeing many early projects have quick pumps and quick dumps and they remain there. And the reason is because the market is becoming extremely saturated right now. If we go to rarity tools and look at upcoming NFT sales, saturated new projects every day. If we go to how rare that is for Solana drops, extremely saturated, even more projects being released daily than projects on Ethereum. And to add to this, everyone is doing the same thing. They see one successful project have gaming or one successful project have passive income and they all copy and people are starting to catch on. There's a huge difference between what is promised versus what is delivered. So when we speak about the blue chip NFTs, we all know it's not a secret. Blue chip NFTs are crypto punks and bored apes, but this took time. CryptoPunks took more than three years to materialize. And when we look at Bored Ape Yacht Club, it wasn't three years, but it still took a few months. So when it comes to these projects, it does take time. In the beginning, it's very difficult to determine what is going to be a blue chip, right? Bored Apes, Punks, they've been sold at Christie's, they have been sold at Sotheby's, they are blue chip. Again, a reminder, does not mean they will go straight up, they still will have their pullbacks. And you're probably watching this thinking, okay, talk about something we can afford. This is the crazy part. All these NFTs that we're speaking about or that we're going to speak about in this video were affordable to many people, not three years ago, not two years ago. I'm talking about just within the last six months, the last five months, the last two months even, and there will be more to come. Some other blue chip NFTs in the space that definitely out of the range for majority of the world are autoglyphs, right? Floor price now, 385 Ethereum. This is because they are the first 
truly on-chain generative art. Everything is on the blockchain. Some others in this space, definitely with that blue chip potential status, are certain projects within art blocks, such as the Fidenzas and the Squiggles. Of course, we have the Beeples as well. And I wanna remind you again, these NFTs are very expensive now. Most people are priced out, but it wasn't very long ago that people were able to buy these types of NFTs for hundreds of dollars or even in the low thousands. And there will only be more NFTs to come. V friends, this one also has blue chip potential. So these blue chips that I'm talking about right now, when we see money leave these other projects, right? Because eventually the market will pop. Who knows, is it today, tomorrow, next week, next year? Who knows, but eventually it will pop and it will flow into these blue chips. V Friends also was auctioned off at Christie's, $1.2 million in sales. And anything Gary V touches has potential to be blue chip. Gary V is coming out with another NFT for his book, 12 and a half. This is something I wasn't able to make a video about because I found out about it last minute. I was hiking, I was in Wyoming, and I got a message from a friend, and he told me about these NFTs. For every 12 books you purchase, you'll get one of these NFTs. So I only had about two hours until the windows closed. I was able to get some of those books. So when that NFT comes out, I don't think it will have, you know, right away a floor price that V Friends has of, you know, 12.5 or whatever V Friends floor price is at that time. But I also don't think it will be extremely cheap but maybe at a good range for people to have some funds to spend could be a very good play. Another blue chip potential NFT is CyberKongs. And surprisingly, Genesis CyberKongs are really the true king of profile picture NFTs, not CryptoPunks. The floor price for a Genesis Kong is much higher than the floor price for a CryptoPunk. And this is because CyberKongs or the Genesis CyberKongs produce 10 bananas a day in passive income. Another project with blue chip potential is Cool Cats. Floor price right now, 11.25 Ethereum. And I wanna remind you again, I know, I know I've said this already, these NFTs are not affordable now to most, but maybe two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, they were very affordable to almost anyone. And there will be more of these projects to come. And it takes time. See, anyone can make a promise, like we said, with all of the saturation of these projects but how many actually come through. So something that I like to do, if possible, is to buy at least two NFTs of a project if it's affordable, especially if it's at mint. Because with these NFT projects, for us to reach NFTs with blue chip potential, it takes time, it takes patience, and there are crashes along the way. But if I'm only holding on to one of those NFTs, I really don't know what to do, right? I might think maybe this is the pump and dump, I get out, or maybe I get out, and then it just continues to skyrocket and it turns into a blue chip. Blue chip takes time. So I try to get at least two NFTs, if possible at mint, or if it's affordable in the aftermarket. But if I'm really able to mint a project, ideally, I like to get at least three. Why? Because if the project goes totally to zero and it fails right away, then I lose out on three min prices. Yes, it's never good to lose money, but it wasn't you know, a lot of Ethereum or a lot of Solana, right? Because I got at the mint price. But if it does have that initial pump, like many projects do, and it has a 3X, I can sell off one of those NFTs and immediately cover the cost of all of my NFTs. Then I have two left over. If the project pumps and I'm unsure, maybe I wanna take profit, I can sell one and then I'm comforting myself knowing that I can still hold on to that last one if this really takes time to grow. Again, reminder, I, I say a lot of things over and over again because I need to stress the importance of NFTs and patience. It takes time, even these blue chips, maybe it doesn't take three, four years like it would take with the traditional financial world, right? Where you have to wait a long time. But an NFT world, a long time is, you know, two, three months, right? People buy NFTs, they wait a day or two and they're thinking, what happened to this NFT? Why is it down? It takes time, it takes patience. And because there are so many NFTs right now being listed every day, it's also important to diversify because statistically, there is a very low chance that you will choose the right project if you put all your eggs in one basket. Again, all these projects have the same roadmap. We're gonna have a game, we're gonna have passive income, but there's a big difference between who actually makes a promise versus who actually delivers. There are other projects with potential blue chip status. I would say some of these other projects, of course, Mutant Ape Yacht Club being connected to Board Ape Yacht Club. Some would say Gutter Cat Gang. 
Another one that I'm putting my bets on right now is Bears Deluxe. I do think this has blue chip potential. It gives me those Cyber Kong vibes. And there's other projects out here as well. Maybe Pudgy Penguins. This is a popular one. And World of Woman. And I want you guys also to put down below in the comments NFTs that you think have blue chip potential. Not NFTs that you like or you think is going to have a quick flip, but NFTs that you think will still be here in two, three, four, five years from now. And what all these current big name NFTs have in common is that at the beginning, no one was paying attention. And right now, I do think there is a similar opportunity with Immutable X NFTs. Immutable X is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. And people are starting to find out about the Immutable X marketplace, but I do believe there's potential for a major massive inflow of new users. Immutable X, I would say, still is early and there are new projects coming to the platform. And if you don't know how to use Immutable X, I did make a tutorial how to connect your wallet and how to buy NFTs. I will leave a link for that video in the description down below. Definitely an opportunity I think that you do not want to miss. So overall, very important to number one, diversify. Number two, if it's affordable, buy more than one NFT, maybe buy two. And number three, the most important one is you have to be patient. I just put this tweet out the other day. Pro tip, try holding NFTs for more than one day before panicking. I am seeing it right now because we hear of all these stories of people making so much money in a quick period. I get messages from people who bought an NFT, they held it for one or two days and they're already panicking. Again, I wanna remind you guys that in the traditional world, you might have to wait three, five, six years. In the NFT world, at least right now, you'll have to wait two months, maybe three months, which I know in the NFT world might feel like five or 10 years. So let's say you were lucky enough to go through these types of steps and find and have the patience to hold on to a blue chip. It is still okay to take profits because that profit can be life-changing money. And in crypto, sadly, we often shame people for selling their NFTs. We say they have paper hands. No, if someone sells their NFT for a major profit, that is not paper hands they already want, especially if it's life-changing money. And I do notice it on Twitter, there's people that really grow attached to their NFTs, right? It becomes their online personality. And when they sell it, not only do people maybe shame them, but even they themselves have a hard time getting rid of it. But it still is okay, guys. Life-changing money, right? The first step, first scenario, is just getting those profits just because you don't know if it's going to turn into a blue chip, right? So you wanna get those profits early on, like we said, maybe by two or three to cover the initial cost. But even when you figure out that you have a blue chip, it still is okay to sell and take profits. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next.